Hello everyone and welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Today we're taking a look at something quite interesting. You see, one of our suppliers, ASI, are importing not just a brand new model of rifle, but from a brand new maker as well. Feast your eyes on the Rainson Edge X. And I will say a quick disclaimer, this is not going to be a full-on video review. You probably guessed that from the um, runtime before you click the video. This is more of a showcase of what the rifle is going to do. The other thing I'm going to say is this is more of a, a demo slash uh, prototype version of the Rainson Edge X. So there's going to be some very slight differences perhaps between this version and the production model, which is another reason why we're not going to be doing a full length review on this. We'll do that when we get the production ones here. So it's obviously more realistic as to what you're going to get compared to potentially what this one might be doing here. This one in particular, they have ASI and, and Rainson have had a little play with the barrel and the shrouds. Uh, for instance, you might have a look and you'll see some of the prototype images or early images. The barrel has actually got a very nice marine finish, whereas this one you can see has got the standard black. So little things like that is why we're not really going to do the full-on review at this moment in time. But that said, let's take a more in-depth look at the Edge X and see what we might think of it. Okay, so as with our full-on rifle reviews, we're going to start off with the rear of the rifle and we have something quite interesting here. You can see already those two adjuster screws staring you in the face. Now, what makes this gun quite interesting is the fact that not only do you have a height adjustable cheek piece, but you also have an adjustable butt pad so you can increase or decrease the length of pull depending on what you feel comfortable with. So as we come down a tad, we also have two rather interesting features. We've got a magazine holder in the bottom of the buttstock there you can see with the mag poking through and the sling swivel. Now what's interesting with this is that you actually have a push button operated system inside the sling where if you push it and pull it will release the swivel and you can actually fit it on the other side of the gun depending on which side you want the sling to hang on. Interesting little bit of kit. Moving slightly further along you can see the rifle has a manual safety and you can see the side lever cocking system. Now the cocking action on this is actually more of a or it's a semi bullpup action instead of a full on bullpup. You can see the lever is forward of the cheek piece which should make it easier to cock especially in hunting scenarios where you can keep the rifle on target without having to in comparison to a full on bullpup use your left hand to wrap around and cock the rifle by your ear that way. This is a much easier system to use and I look forward to testing it and using it when we get the actual production rifle here which well, we can we do a review a with. full length weaver rail on top. Just behind that there is another piece of weaver rail for accessories and such depending on what you want to use. You also have the most important part a built in regulator which guns of this price bracket usually don't have. The bit that's really interesting is you also have a regulator pressure gauge as well as an air pressure gauge so you know exactly what your gun's doing. On top of that for the tuners and such it's handy to have because you know exactly what you can set your regulator pressure to. As we come up a little bit higher you've got a set of accessory rails either side of the rifle which are no doubt going to be used or will be handy for laser, laser sights or your torches and such like that and as we come down a little bit more you have got a match type trigger with an adjustable blade that can be adjusted for direction also height and you also have an adjuster inside of the trigger unit itself so you can adjust for pull weight and such like that so interesting bit of kit it must be said something that people may not be picking up on however is the grip now usually we don't mention too much about grips and things like that but what makes this one interesting is despite the fact it's a synthetic stock the grip isn't plastic, it's rubber, and it gives a lovely soft textured feel on it when you've got the thing gripped. One thing I will mention as we come up, the cheek piece is not rubber, that's a plastic, which is actually you're better off with it being that way to be fair. A rubber cheek piece is going to rub your cheek straight off. But moving slightly further along. So now we move towards the business end and things are still looking good. You've got a metal shroud covering the barrel there. On top of that, you do also have a blast tamer on the end. However, what that's actually doing, as I'm sure you can tell, that is more of a thread protector than anything else. And you do have half inch UNF buried underneath that, which is again, lovely, lovely move, especially when some guns, say from China and such, are using metric threads and all that sort of stuff. Underneath there, you also have a incredibly large uh, buddy bottle, which I believe is 500 cc's in size. So you've definitely got quite good lungs on this gun, especially in conjunction with that regulator just behind it there that you can see. 
Moving slightly further underneath, we do have a accessory adapter on there, a rail, which obviously you're going to be using to fit bipods and such on uh, and things like that. Or if you really want to go GI Joe, I suppose you could put a foregrip on there, but uh, go on, go the bipod route is what it's mainly on there for. Yeah, so essentially you have got a lot with the gun, but it gets better because, as you may remember, we had one magazine in the rear of the gun. On top of that, we have two magazines spare with the rifle. Out of the box, I don't know if this is a new record or not for a brand new gun, but yes, you will get three magazines unless something changes as standard with the Edge, which is pretty impressive, it must be said. As we come back, you'll also notice we have a silencer, which also comes with the gun. As we said, it does have half-inch UNF on the end there, so you can chuck your own one on, but you do also get this rather chunky metal silencer to go on there as well, which has got quite a nice bit of weight to it, it must be said. You can almost thwack a rabbit or something with it. But yeah, it's overall, you get quite a lot of features, but we're not done here because there's a couple of little things we want to look at on the other side of the gun. Okay, so the rifle is now facing the other way, and we're just going to show off a couple of little features of the gun that we think are quite interesting. So, number one, we did mention the sling stud setup when we was looking at the rifle earlier, but I'm just going to show you that in practice. So, as you'll know, earlier the stud was on the right-hand side of the gun. Obviously, we're facing the left-hand side now. And to fit this, you can have the, the sling basically on either side. You simply plug it in like so, and she's in simple as and that is not going to go anywhere at all the other thing i'm going to mention which is a very very big um, deal especially if you're a hunter is it comes with the power adjuster built into it very similar to crowl and such like that and uh, Breximex, which is again very very good feature even to an extent for plinkers and such people who want to shoot in the garden as we all know garden fences aren't the thickest thing on, a, on the planet and a sub 12 feet power rifle will go through it to minimize potential over penetration you can whack that down to its lowest setting where it runs around six seven feet pounds and you're going to be a lot lot better off i'll put it that way and again it's the same for hunting if you're shooting indoors maybe ratting something like that then you can whack that down to low power and you've not got to have any worries about potentially damaging the property owner's um well property essentially but it's a great bit of kit and there's a hell of a lot of features on there for a rifle this size now what i will mention is the rifle isn't a lightweight. I mean, we've not had the scales on it yet, but there's publications out there saying it's around 8.8 .8 pounds. They're probably bang on. Um, it's not a lightweight gun. What I will say though is that the weight it is actually balanced quite nicely. It's pretty much in the grip, maybe ever so slightly behind the grip from what testing I've done with it. Meaning the front end, despite that rather chunky bottle on there, is actually really quite light, keeping the gun pointable. So again, if you're using it for hunting and you've got to swing it around a bit quick, as you know, when you're out there hunting, you don't have the most time to sit and aim because when you do that, sometimes your quarry is gone. You've got to basically make sure you're on target and pull that trigger and get that shot off quick. This gun should allow you to do that. That said, maybe if you're not looking for an ultra heavyweight gun, I don't know. It's worth shouldering, I'll put it that way, from um, the little play that I've had with it at this moment in time. But I think it's a very, very interesting little bit of kit. It, I think that's quite easy to say and fair to say at this moment in time. So with that said, it's an interesting little beast, isn't it? It's not like what you'd expect from a new, new time company starting up to sort of start out with. You might have thought of maybe something a bit smaller. I would have thought maybe Springer's to begin with, or maybe a, a slightly more simple PCP, maybe even something like a PR900, just a sort of honest, straightforward little gun. But uh, they've actually hit the ground running with a regulated, with regulator gauges, fully adjustable, basically, pre-charge and uh, the best thing is they're keeping the price sensible as well around 600 odd pounds now what i will say i obviously we can't say too much about the gun just yet because we've not done any proper testing on the rifle shall we say or on the um, production guns obviously they're not here yet uh, but what i will say is if what we've seen from turkey is anything to go by their barrels are pretty pretty on fire at this moment in time and it should be a bloody accurate gun Again, massive thank you to ASI for sending us this rifle, and um, I'm just very glad that the, the bribes worked, the threats worked, and you, <laughs> you sent us a rifle this way. It worked. We'll try it again next time, see what we can get. 
But no, uh, it should be a really, really interesting gun. And I want to know what uh, you ladies and gentlemen watching this, let me know what you think of the rifle in the comments as well. Because I think it's going to be a really interesting one, especially considering, like I said, that the pricing should be pretty sens sensible with it. And it does seem to have a lot of boxes ticked at this moment in time, especially with the Walnut rifle, which between me and you is the one that I would love to review. Wink, wink, ASI. But yeah, I think it's a great looking thing. I think it's got a lot going for it that I think hunters and target shooters are probably going to fall in love with. But like we said, obviously my opinion doesn't mean anything. It's what you guys and girls back home think of the gun. So let me know what you think in the comments and um, we'll see you next time. What I will say, we've got a Reximex Acura we're going to be um, having on camera very, very soon. We have had a bit of a hiatus away again. I know we keep doing it, but we've just been a bit busy and things going on in the background. But we are back and it is good to be back. So I will see you very shortly. Take care, everyone.